good morning, everybody, on my behalf as well. Glad to be here. So as I said, I will talk about the data ecosystem in our business, in property services, facility services business, how it has been evolving and how the industry landscape is, is uh, forming itself. Uh, our business is very labor intensive. It's people to people business and, uh, and often we are not the first ones to do the digitalization. Um, but uh, digitalization is coming and it take, it's taking different types of forms as our frontliners start to use digitalization and our, our customers, our end users get digitally to connect us. So about the content of the presentation, I will first tell a few words about the company, uh, the industry to give, give you an idea uh, of what is the field we are playing at, and then uh, we move on to the places that think, because we are a facility services business, we run facilities, then we go to the digitality in our service provision, how it, uh, how it is done, I will, will take uh, three dimensions, separate in three dimensions to make it easier to see what kind of things are going on and happening, and then consider a little each of those and take, take a look at the benefits and what it means in a large corporate to be operating in one country with these processes and systems. As said, I've been working with ISS for a long period of time and Half of this time I've been responsible of processes and systems. So the field is very familiar. Uh, ISS is a, is a multinational company. We operate in more than 30 countries. We have more than 400,000 employees. And our customers are often also multinational global companies who operate in many countries and want compliance and similar service wherever they, their office, their branch is located. About facility services, we provide all types of services our customers need to run their facilities, cleaning, food, technical, security and support services. In the light blue box, I have the word integrated facility services, meaning that our services are often an integral part of our customers' business. Also meaning that our customers' service is, is such that, that, that we operate together with our customers and we use the customers' data systems and our data systems are sometimes integrated to customers' data systems to make the process flow. The purpose of the company is connecting people and places to make the world work better. So we are on business to business service foremost. The places that think. So if we want to make the places to think, we have to consider what is the need for the users, the end users, what is the need of the facility owner and so on. So we have to consider the functional needs of the people who are working, the world of work, and the emotional side of it. And the emotional side is the one that gets at us to use digital services, makes us to connect, uh, take the first step, because the emotional thing is fun, there is something for us, and, and, and that's, uh, that was what runs the, the first connection. So how to get the places to think? Uh, of course, it's clear we have to make them digital. In many businesses, this has been the case for a long period of time. But our surroundings, our industry has not been very digitalized. It's very diverse, very heterogenic, and, uh, and uh, the buildings themselves has, have not been digital for a long period of time. Now the new buildings are digital, but, uh, but still, and in the service provision, there's even more things that should be in control, but are not digital. And that's what is happening in this industry at the moment. So, how to get the places to think? We use the digitality 
uh, as I said, I took here three dimensions. We use it on a traditional way to enhance our service provision efficiency so that our services would be more efficient. This is the traditional ERP type of approach where we, where we make it smoother, smoother uh, for, uh, you know, that it's more efficient. Often it's also uh, of enhances customer's process, but the, the look is inside. Then the other approach is the smart use of smart buildings. So everybody heard about smart homes, smart buildings, as said, new buildings are very digital. They produce a lot of information. And also there's a lot of sensoring you can add if you wish wherever you wish. Actually, the forces that are driving the digitalization in this industry are, of course, the same as in other industries. We have this uh, mobility. Everybody can use mobile apps. It's, uh, it's become everyday thing of, of all the people. Uh, then we have very advanced algorithms. The storing data, moving data is very cheap. And, uh, and all these changes uh, happen in our industry as well. So uh, with the smart buildings, we can, we can enhance the, the energy efficiency and, and the conditions and uh, the comfort of the users in the building. And this can happen through algorithms and collecting data. The third dimension I have chosen here is the user's connectivity to the building and, uh, and uh, to get the people connect to our services digitally and also this way they can get the services which are important for them, which are personal for them. Uh, if we think about the colors, the light blue one is the most interesting one because we don't know yet what is happening. There is a you know, huge need for platforms and the, the big players are producing platforms and connecting themselves to buildings and, and offering the user information for the participant in the service provision. So there is more white space on the right side of the picture. Now to go on about the enhancing service provision, I will briefly describe uh, the type of services we are doing. So our service is providing tasks. We provide tasks and they have to be right and rightly timed and done efficiently. The task, tasks are arising from many sources. So of course we plan them, people make requests or then the building automation system or, or our hub analytics can rise up tasks for us to, to provide. And once the task has been initiated, then it's about allocating it to the right people who has the, the, who has the capability, the skills to do the tasks. And, uh, and once this is done, the task will be, of course, provided for the customer's satisfaction. So mostly this business, this, uh, uh, this uh, process has been very labor intensive and done by supervisors themselves for the most part. But now when we get the digital places, we, we get the digitality in place, we can do this more and more through algorithms. Of course, we have to have a lot of information. We have the digital building, we have the digital building with the taxonomy of all the assets and spaces in the building on the one side and then on the other hand, we have to have a digital picture of the service provision and everything that is connected to service provision. And this is, has been the part that has been lacking. But we are going there more and more, and then we are getting uh, a real-time operative dashboards for our supervisors. And also, of course, we get a real-time internal and external reporting like we all can today see how the pizza is coming and, and now it's on the corridor and now it's on my door. <laughs> so we have to have the same type of visibility in the service provision for the most part. So the services, when, once they are provided, it has to be happen in real time. So once we have this, we get the shared data. We can share the data, we can use it in money pur purposes, pricing, benchmarking, whatever. The share, we have to have a, sh a lot of data about how industry is, is operating and we have the, we'll have that data also more and more globally with the same format. And once we are there, we can more than today answer the questions what should be delivered, when it should be delivered and who 
shall deliver it. Also, of course, where also is often important in our business. And in future, these questions can be more and more replied by advanced algorithms, or the advanced algorithms can help a lot of the supervisors' work and shift it to more people intensive regarding customers and the, and the, and the, and the first frontliners helping them. So it will change. All right. Then, as a second dimension, I have the smart building, building thing here. We use the, the smart building idea so that we collect the data in a hub where actually people are at art one place and we have a picture of what, the, what is happening in the building technically. And we can also collect a lot of external data, of course, weather forecast, whatever there is uh, available uh, for free. And then we can comply, we can unif unify that data and make assumptions and, and uh, forecast based on it. And more and more, that's, that can be done digitally. But as I said, we have buildings of many ages, and the old buildings um, don't produce much data. You can add it with the sensors, but still you are in, in a bit difficult phase with it. And, uh, and the data is mostly handled manually by humans. Uh, more and more, the buildings are then in the 2.0 situation, providing data. And, and, uh, and there's a lot of data uh, available. Now, but still, uh, the data is, uh, is um, distributed around, and, and, uh, and it is, it is uh, difficult to use algorithms to handle it. But now we are getting more and more in the, in the situation where, where we can predict forehand what is happening with algorithms. We have so much data, we have so ad advanced learning analytics that, that we can do maintenance and provide services in the right time, even before we can start providing, even before people feel that they need that. For example, we can, we can clean the spaces um, depending on how many people have visited there, or we can do maintenance based on the information from the, from the systems and, uh, and uh, system parts themselves or, or based on the information we have gathered concerning the faults arising and so on. So it is changing a lot. The efficiency will rise when we do it, when really needed. Okay. So then the third dimension, which I mentioned to be the user's connectivity, the building and its services, and the question is, of course, what is it there for me? So we all connect to, uh, connect to different kind of social networks because there is a lot of interest for us. So the same way the facility industry, the facility services has to be meaningful for people. And, and this, this is in a way the part where, where it would be very beneficial to know what the client, what the, what the individual customer is appreciating, what are the preferences. Uh, with the social experience, it's often about, of course, people want to know where their peers are, where, where everybody is, where is my team, where is uh, the suitable area, meeting room, whatever working space, places for me, and so on. And of course, connecting to the services, requesting services mobily, and, and all of that. So this is, this is the part where there is the, the highest need for cooperation with various parties, because nobody is processing all the information. It has to be gathered, there has to be a platform, and, and, uh, and people have to be willing to use the platform. And so there, there is happening a lot, and as I said, we don't really know how it will go, but we will know that this will be very important in offering digital experiences and services to our customers. Then I have, I took a brief, you know, picture about uh, what are the benefits for all of these. So I have the three dimensions on the top, and then I have put facility-related benefits and then end-user-related benefits on the on the layers below. So. Uh, Price is, of course, essential. When you increase your 
efficiency you can you are competitive and, and the end user will get, get a lower price and that's that's al always a driver but also you have to provide more more value on the value side and for buildings today and facilities today are not merely buildings with, a, with, with the space to operate in. It's more and more a service product. And the service dimension is the, is the, is the one that, that separates various operators. So it can be much more competitive if, if in this facility, in this business park, you get the service your employees are needing need and your, your employees like it. In the future, now we know we talk about this COVID thing while we started and everybody is now connecting uh, from home and so on. We know that most of us who do digital, somehow consider digital things in our work, can do it remotely. But we also know that, that not everything is, is most efficient digitally. We have to have, somebody say that you have to be a 30% if you are in my line of job, for example, so 30% should be on the office or by meeting people face to face. And, uh, and uh, in the future, therefore, we must, the facilities must be attractive. They must lure people to come to the facility. So the facility has to offer something more than a home as a workplace. And this is where we as a, as a service company and a, as an operator of facilities can do a lot so that, that there is experiences you cannot have at home, there are services that are not available at home. So this is maybe one of the most important approaches in the future. Then uh, I, <laughs> I, I put something, so my position, I operate in one country and ESS is more than 30 countries and the business has been very diverse. And most of the companies have grown through purchasing other companies, so there is a strong local, local approach. And the market and the customers are also, also very local. But what is happening is that more and more we need the shared data, as I told before. And that's why we are more and more using shared software in each country. It might be surprising that we don't do this yet, but this business it's, it's, it's not the way it has gone. So, so we, are, we are getting more and more common software to scale the digitality in our, our industry. But we still have to balance the need of local software. We have regulations, we have authorities, and also market-specific things that you have to connect to. And you cannot connect them only you know, by people. So you need also local software. And this is actually where Solita has been helping us a lot, so, so it's been very good. So this balance is also important and, and of course it's changing, but as the need of digital handling of data increases, there will, will be, I suspect, even more global systems on side of the shared software in this line of industry in in future so because everything be, will be more and more in the systems and the, we will have the digital twin the digital picture of our process covering all so this was my presentation i hope you hope you enjoyed it and got some picture of the, of, of how we how we do it in the facility services industry and what type of environment this is to leverage digitality. So thank you all. Have a nice day on my behalf. And we will have a small chat, I think, after this. So there will be some questions. I, I hope to see them. Thank you, Jukka. <coughs> it was really interesting. And, and we're getting some comments also online that it's amazing to listen to your presentation. Please uh, sit down thank and you. have a sip of water. You've been talking yeah. for <laughs> half an hour now. So. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, and how many parallel thoughts you, you've awakened in the uh, audience. <coughs> We were talking earlier about this uh, before your presentation in preparation and uh, uh, also uh, this morning before you came, uh, came on stage that uh, since ISS is a, a huge group that has essentially been built by buying up companies in, in most of the local markets, that must be a gargantuan task in integrating all the software and technologies to get this 
vision that you just uh, pictured uh, to work. Yeah. How have you handled that? <laughs> oh, uh, it has been back and forth. You know, it's, yeah. uh, it doesn't <coughs> happen at once. <coughs> but uh, of course, the, the the customer is the king, and the uh, and the the result they require guides us so that the, our customers they require compliance, more and more similar services similar reporting wherever uh, they are in yes. this global world so then we must adapt this approach yeah. but as said it's not been easy in our in this industry and, and yeah. our our ways of using data in in different countries is, yeah. is still very different but mm -hmm. we are on not on that long march and and group is taking very very strong steps on that di direction yeah. so so we will be, be there what would you say, uh, and I understand that you can't have an exact answer, but sort of percentage-wise, where are you right now as with technologies provided and solutions provided by group versus locally? If we say 70-30 like or 80-20 or 50-50? Oh, it's a bit different, say, but uh, it's, it's, it's coming to 50-50. Okay. But <laughs> as you see, it's, it's still not very far. Yeah. But I think in a few years, it will be it will be very high. Mm -hmm. So of course, all the essential parts, so the the parts that are you know very generic, generic you know purchase to pay, uh, order to bill, mm -hmm. um, human resources. Those are the ones that that, that we try to get them market leading software for from the big companies and use it efficiently. Yeah, yeah. And then there the, there remains places where we we have to do it locally and we have to connect this uh, this uh, this software to the local software so that it yeah. all, all operates absolutely M but so the change is now getting much quicker but still we are on the way mm -hmm. let's take one from the audience we still have a, a good time here uh, Carolina is asking or saying first of all thank you Jukka <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I assume that uh, your presentation was well received uh, the question is uh, about space and people digitally connecting uh, where does ISS see this developing further in the future you had the light blue Column yeah. and you explain that yeah. uh, thought, but what is what is your vision? Uh, though my, my vision is that, that, that the places will know us. Yeah, uh, like uh, in, I think it first will happen at homes because it, it's very safe environment to do it and yeah. give your information. But in future, the places will know us better and offer often offer us meaningful services, mm -hmm. and that's why. Uh, as I said, I suspect that the, that this is uh, th this is where we interact with the, with, with the global platforms to. To, to that people give the information on their benefit yeah. to, the, to, to the ones that are providing service. service. Mm -hmm. That will have to happen. But there is, is not much of that still in the problem. Of course, we have our, our own own um, apps. Uh, you, you, can, you, can, uh, you, you can do it and you can connect it. And, but still, we can never gather that much information that yeah. there already is on the web from each of us. Absolutely. And if we could use some of that information on the benefit of our customers, that would, would be very helpful. So I yeah. think this is more and more, but it's not here yet, no. but that's what's happening. But you can see that in, say, for example, Singapore, in really advanced new office buildings, yeah. that they are actually scaringly intelligent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know where you want to go, and they suggest that to you, yeah. and then take you to the you know whatever floor. Yeah. <laughs> I remember watching Minority Report <laughs> when I was young, yeah. and I thought, wow, that can just be. And now many of these features are here. Yeah. Yeah, they're true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's funny. <laughs> Let's take another one from the audience. <coughs> uh, Eric is asking, how do you get the traditional commercial property owners and builders on track to support your journey at ISS? I guess they aren't uh, the most digitally interested and a lot of old systems themselves are uh, still in place. Yes, that's true. And there will be, because property and facility is always an asset. And the ones who own owns the asset has a strong, uh, strong, evening, strong uh, incentive to, to to run it wisely and to have information of everything that related to the to the asset. Yeah. So there will al always be uh, information that's owned by the property owners. But the uh, companies, uh, I think the, the ones driving the chains are the big manufacturing companies, and on the other hand. Uh, the companies that uh, that have a lot of expert labor uh, and uh, who are in a way competing of the labor. Yeah. So then when you compete of the labor, you have to offer 
them the best working environment mm -hmm. and something to make them happy. Yeah. And uh, and this tries to say change so that that uh, that the, uh, the property or the facility eventually it's owned by somebody. But in in here as well, the end user will drive the change. The need will drive so the really change. So you're really looking at the yeah. profound competitive yes. advantage that the yes. owner will be able yes. to supply to that. Yes, and, and and once people want to be it and facility, they are ready to pay for it, yeah. a premium, and and that's what's driving the change. But still, there is a lot of thinking that I only let you the space yeah, yeah. and and use it as you will, and yeah, yeah. and 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 it's it's your. You know, up mm -hmm. to you what kind of services you think. Absolutely. But uh, but that's not the future. Mm -hmm. Like you refer to Singapore, the modern modern, modern facilities. Yeah. There, there is everything available, yeah. like a big city. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jukka, thank you very much for your presentation okay, and also the was. answers. I, I think uh, the uh, answers were really enlightening and opened up the scene a little bit more.